everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of Red Table Talk, Season 1, Episode 4, which was titled Girls Trippin'. was the much anticipated episode where Jada Pinkett Smith sits down and talks with Gabrielle Union. Now, it was a good episode, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I was a tad bit disappointed because the way they built this thing up was that they were going to address their 17-year feud, which is really a non-feud. I guess somebody told one of them that the other one didn't like them and so they didn't like each other for 17 years and now they are getting ready to address it but they didn't really address anything and what it basically turned out to be was Jada kind of egging Gabrielle on to like tell her business but Jada never really shared anything. And so if you follow Gabrielle, probably like the last five years, Gabrielle has been very vocal about her insecurities and her jealousies and how she's treated other women, how vindictive she used to be towards other women. Um, I think she talked about it at Essence Fest in 2013. Then she did a show with Oprah with... Um, Felicia Rashad and a couple of other ladies were on the panel and they were sitting down talking. And then, of course, she uh, released her book last year where she basically, you know, just exposed who she is and everything that she's been through as a woman. And, you know, her first marriage, what she's gone through with Dwayne Wade, what it's like being the wife of a, you know, NBA player. So she had basically everything that Gabrielle talked about, most of us had already heard before. So we were sitting there expecting them to actually talk about the specifics of not, not necessarily say who started the rumor, but basically did somebody tell Gabrielle something and then it got back to Jada that Gabrielle didn't like her or was it vice versa? Like what was the real issue? And then they were talking about, um, you know, leading up to it how Dwayne and Will were friends. And so I was expecting them to talk about like, if the two of them were hanging out together, how did they react? And, or did they ever come over to each other houses? Or like if Will went to Dwayne's house, did he just not take Jada with him? And like, you know, how did all of this work out? But we got none of that. And to be honest with you, Jada was sitting up there like that friend who never tells their business never spilled their tea, but they'll sit there and say just enough to get you to keep talking about, you know, what you're going through and telling all your business. And then you realize like when you're on your way home or you hang up the phone or whatever, you're like, well, dang, I done told her all my business, but that helper didn't share nothing about herself. And that was the feeling I took away. So in that sense, I didn't feel that Jada was being genuine or that she benefited or learned anything from their experience and then we didn't hear like what were the details around them finally saying we're not going to do this anymore like did they go out for drinks did they go out for dinner or did Jada just call Gabrielle up and say hey girl I'm doing this show and I'm going to have an episode on you know friendship and I think that this would be a good time you know for us to bury the hatchet like how did all this happen and Oh, that was crazy but when the show first started Jada was out in the garden with her mom and we learned that her mom is a huge Gabrielle Union fan and so Jada was basically telling her you know don't embarrass me don't freak out you know don't be acting like a groupie and then Gabrielle comes in and you know she's greeting everybody and Jada's mom you know giving Gabrielle this huge hug and you know then they go to enter in the house and they go in and they sit down and basically have this, um, I think the entire episode from the time Jada and her mom were talking in the garden to when the thing ended was about 20 minutes. And 
I would say of that 20 minutes, Gabrielle probably talked 15 other minutes and Jada talked about three minutes and then the other two minutes was her and her mom <laughs> in the garden. But as you know, um, on Wednesday, so the show airs on Mondays and on Wednesdays, they take um, questions from the audience and do like a follow-up show. When Sheree was on the show, Will's first wife, she actually came back and did the talk back show with Jada. But I guess since they aired this and Gabrielle and Dwayne, they're actually in Paris, I think, right now. So she wasn't available to do the after show with Jada. So Jada had two of her friends. And one of them was a lady named Karen Tensor. And she said that they've known each other for 20 years or more than 20 years. And that Karen is her publicist. And then there was uh, Mia Pitts on there. And I thought Mia was an actress. Or maybe there is an actress named uh, Mia. Is it Mia? Yeah, Mia Pitts. And they went to high school together and became close friends in college and have been friends ever since. And I thought Jada said that Mia handles the estate for the Smith family. So, I don't know. Anyway, they were the guests that sat down. So, Grammy wasn't there and Willow wasn't there either. So, it was Jada and her friends. And so, the questions that some of the people asked was, um, someone wrote in to express that she wished Jada had expressed more about who um, she was at the time that the whole beef started with Gabrielle. And Jada admits that she was immature back then and didn't want to share the spotlight with anyone else. So basically, she was jealous of Gabrielle. Je Gabrielle was jealous of her. And then they just had all this um, tension going on that wasn't even necessary all these years. And then Mia chimed in and said that they should have acknowledged the issue right then and there and not let it go on for 17 years. And that was time and energy that they wasted <laughs> being very childish and immature. And then Karen said that I don't have the ego to hold grudges that long. And it would bother her and it would build up resentment. And resentment is something she doesn't have time for. So she too would have addressed the issue. And, you know, they were like talking about, so like what happened when you all ended up in the same place? Did you just like stand on opposite sides of the room and again it goes back to how can your husbands and your you know be friends and then you just at the party not talking to each other making it obvious and awkward to everybody in the room that the two of you don't like each other and then somebody wrote in and said how do you make amends with girlfriends when you fall out and so Jada says that um, she has several has several fractured relationships and it's not about blame you just see things differently and that she had a friend that she didn't speak to for seven years and then they ran into each other one day and then they just picked up where they left off at and I guess they never really dealt with the issue but enough time had passed where both of them probably had forgot about why they were mad with each other. So Mia said that you know I'm a people pleaser she acknowledged that and says that she's held on to toxic relationships for too long and now that she values herself more is she finds it easy to walk away from people that are not bringing positivity and light into her life and so the next question was i'm a people pleaser how do i stop so jada read that question after mia you know was saying that she wasn't a people pleaser so mia went on to add that um you know when you're a people pleaser you were pleasing yourself and not giving that you're not pleasing yourself and not giving the best of yourself because you're giving all your time and energy trying to make other people happy and make them like you and then Karen said that she's not a people pleaser and she says that she'll do it for people if she feels that the person needs something or that they're worthy of it which was kind of confusing because now you're basically saying that you are a people pleaser but I guess she's very discriminatory or discerning about the people that she's going to be a people pleaser for and I think when you do that that makes it even worse because it's something about that person or something that you need from that person or it's something you're getting out of making that person happy and so I think that would be more draining than if that was just the type of person you were all the time and the next question was when do you stop trying to heal relationships and so Karen said that when you realize that they just aren't into you. So I thought that was funny. And the person was basically saying like, 
the relationship has, you know, the, the friendship has been fractured and you're still trying to fix it and the other person isn't reciprocating and then just how long do you try and deal with that situation? And then Mia chimed in and said, you know, what if they are part of a group, like you're all friends and the group of friends always hang out together. Like how do you deal with the situation then? And when you've gone through so much with somebody, like there has to be a point where you have to put yourself first. And I'm thinking Jada was a good example of that because her and Gabrielle obviously traveled in the same circles, but they were able to be mad at each other for 17 years and it didn't seem to bother either one of them. And then the next question was, do friendships run their course? I think all, well, not all, but most friendships <laughs> run their course at some point in time. And so Jada was saying that sometimes friendships do run their course and sometimes you just need a break from people all the time and you just have to let people go with your blessings. Like if you just outgrown the friendship, it doesn't have to be nasty. It doesn't have to turn into a situation where you don't like each other. Just say, you know, this isn't working for me anymore and just go about your business. And I think a lot of people have a problem doing that. And that's how you end up with situations with hurt feelings like you are calling people, asking them, oh, well, let's go do this or let's go do that. Or they're, they're not returning the phone calls or they always have an excuse as to why they don't want to hang out with you anymore. So now you're starting to feel like it's something wrong with you when as mature adults, you should be able to just say a person like, we really don't have that much in common anymore. And so I think it was Mia that was saying that, you know, you used to, it could be things as simple as like you used to hang out and party all the time, get drunk all the time, but now the other person doesn't drink anymore. So they tend to find friends that don't drink anymore. They don't want to hang out with you and watch you get intoxicated and act the fool in public. And then they say like people have children and the other person doesn't have children. And so that can, you know, be a fork in the road in friendships. And I know that's happened to me, like when I was younger and I had my first kid and then I had friends that didn't have kids. And so you kind of migrate towards the people that have kids and then the ones that don't have kids, they kind of go off this way. Or if you say too many times, well, I can't go because I don't have a babysitter or whatever, then they'll tend to kind of like drift away from you. And marriage was another thing, like when your friends start getting married and you're still single, that can cause like a friendship to kind of mellow out. And they were saying, you know, just have appreciation and gratitude for the time together because 20 years later, you might run into each other and reconnect. And I know I have a friend, she was my best friend in high school and we're still friends, but we can go years without talking to each other. And then one day she'll call me or I'll be thinking about her and I'll call her and we'll be on the phone for like seven hours. We might hang out, you know, a couple of times and all of a sudden we're just not really talking anymore. But it's always that feeling that if I ever needed her, she would be there. And if she ever needed me, I would be there for her as well. And so the next question was toxic friends um, want to come back like you've severed the relationship because somebody was toxic and now they've come back to apologize and say that they've matured and they want the friendship back. What do you do? Do you, you know, think about it or do you just let it go and say, no, girl, you fooled me once. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to give you another opportunity. And so Mia said that um, her mother gave her a book called Boundaries and that you should go with your instincts about accepting people back into your life, you know, but don't be afraid to accept them back. If it's somebody that you really like, liked and you really appreciated the friendship and you want to give it another chance, do so, but set boundaries and then know when the person is about to cross those boundaries. And then you can check them and say, hey, okay, you're getting back into those old ways again. And then, you know, let them readjust themselves or maybe it was just they were lying about having changed and they really haven't and then be okay with ending the friendship and then i think with that question jada admitted that she was codependent and then mia told her that codependency people people that are codependent attract other codependent people and so that's never going to be a healthy situation and then they were asked you know what part of female friendships nourish your soul 
And so Jada, you know, was saying that the whole, the whole concept of the feminine spirit, and that it was just something that she can't explain. And I noticed when she be talking to um, Willow, you know, remember I was talking about in the last video when she was saying that she do the goddess bath with Willow, and just the time, you know, communing with nature and being at peace as one and all of this stuff. So she seems to be big into that. And then Mia says that um, she just loves being around powerful women in the sense that they connect to each other and she likes um, strong, healthy relationships where women are supporting one another. There's no jealousy or envy or trying to one-up each other. And then Jada chimed back in and says that when, um, when she sees, like when women see each other willing to connect to what is great about you. So if, they, if a woman sees something really positive and uplifting about you, that should draw you to that person and build a friendship. And she says that, you know, she wants to be around women who want the best for her and that, you know, her shine doesn't dull their shine and that everybody, you know, can be shining bright if you're secure in who you are. And then Karen chimed in and said that she notices with a lot of younger women and she doesn't know if it's related to reality TV and how women are, you know, the image of women is perfect perpetuated on television, but she just sees a lot of competitiveness with young women where they don't get that whole thing that we can all win and we can all be great and we can all celebrate each other. Everything just seems to be a competition. And next we had, um, how do you feel when someone is turning others against you? And they all pretty much agree that if you have a friend that's pitting you against other friends or talking negatively about you, behind your back that that's not a friend at all. That's really an enemy. And so Karen says that, you know, that type of person is dangerous to have around and you need to snip, clip, and cut them out your life immediately. And Jada says that if someone can't bring the best out of you and the best out of them, then they have no place being in your life. And Mia says that, you know, that's just an enemy. And so she doesn't believe in the whole frenemy concept, either you're her friend or you're not her friend, and if you're not, she don't have nothing for you. And the last question was, have you ever stayed in a friendship where the friend has betrayed a trust? And I thought this was real interesting. So Jada says that we've all um, been betrayed and we've all betrayed other people. <laughs> I guess you have to be willing to forgive. And she says that uh, when somebody betrays you, it's not about you, it's about a weakness in that person and then they're just perpetuating that weakness onto you and she says that if the relationship can be repaired address the betrayal when it happens and see if you can move forward and she says that it's easy to love the beautiful parts of people but not the ugly parts and but you just have to be honest about what's going on and then miss karen says that um if you can see the other side it can be repaired then she went on to tell a story about she had a friend that they had went to the atl machine and so the girl was standing behind her watching her enter her pin number and so the next day she had laid her purse on the coffee table and the girl stole her atm card and she said like luckily it was back when like the maximum limit you could take out of the atm machine was like two hundred dollars but she said that they, you know, she forgave the girl and I guess the girl told her she needed the money. I don't know what was going on, but she forgave her and she says that that was 30 years ago and that they are still friends and they still get along and everything. And then Jada asked her and said, well, what about um, if a friend sleeps with your man? So then we find out that one of her friends slept with her man <laughs> and that she said that she forgave that girl also and that the part about forgiving a friend when they betrayed you is that you can't then turn around and throw it back up in their face every time you get and so she said that was something she had to learn because she would throw it back up but then she had to ask herself like well why did you forgive her and continue to be her friend if you're not going to move on from you know the whole situation and then Mia says that she had a friend who slept with the father of her child and she said that the friend when she confronted her about it the friend denied it and that it ended up ruining the friendship but then she later realized that the reason the friendship ended was because the friend didn't respond the way that she wanted her to so i guess when she asked the girl the girl was like no i didn't do that then she was done with it 
But she didn't really know what she wanted the girl to say. Like, did she want the girl to say, yeah, I did sleep with him. Will you please forgive me? Or did she want her to be angry and upset and outraged? So I think the response that the girl gave her didn't give her like an emotional response that she needed, you know, in that moment. And so she said that years later, um, she reached out to the girl and apologized, you know, for putting their friendship in that situation. And she probably shouldn't have went to the girl. She probably should have went to the baby daddy and asked him what happened first before she confronted her friend. And if they really were friends, then she should have trusted her friend not to have slept with her man and known that it was just a lie or a rumor. And then Karen said that um, when you really like a person and let frivolous frivolous things come between you that, you know, it's never a good thing and that you just have to treat your friendships with, um, you know, with kindness and gentleness and just always be willing to hear your friends out. And if an issue comes up that you're willing to talk it through and talk about it. So that was, um, I don't even think that the Q and A session lasted that long either. But it looked like they have some um, interesting shows coming up. Um, like I said, I was disappointed. I like the fact that Gabrielle, once again, you know, was being open and honest about, you know, the type of person that she used to be a mean girl and all of that. Because I'm sure there was somebody watching who had never heard her testimony before. But I just really was disappointed in the fact that they hyped this up, that they were going to talk about their 17 year rift and how they mended that 17 year rift and that's not what happened and like i say jada you know she admits that she used to be a mean girl and she betrayed people and i really don't think that jada has learned that much considering the fact that she sat up there and let gabrielle just tell all her business and gabrielle seemed to be very happy that she could you know talk freely about this stuff so maybe jada has a little bit more, you know, a little more ways to go before she could be as open and honest as um, Jada was. So guys, that's it for me. Let me know what you thought about um, this episode of Red Table Talk. Leave your comments below, rate the video, subscribe to the channel. You can do all of that below. And until the next time, I shall talk to you later. Bye-bye.